Hi, my name's David from Core Physiotherapy and Pilates Studio. Today we're going to talk about ankle sprains, how they occur, and what we can do to treat them. So you can see from our model of the foot here, um, ankle sprains typically occur by the foot rolling in, or less commonly rolling out. Um, and they result in injuries to the ligaments that connect the lower leg to the foot. Okay, So there's particularly some ligaments through that come from the front of this bone here, down onto the foot here, just, which are basically stretched by that movement. Ankle sprains normally occur during sports involving running, change of direction, um, and landing. Um, so sports like basketball, soccer, tennis, are, are common sports that we see people with these types of injuries. So the degree of ligament injury can be broken into one of three categories. Grade one injuries, where there's a minor strain of the ligament. So you know, th these are the types of injuries that typically see you able to continue with a small degree of discomfort. Um, there may be some swelling around the area, but typically they, they don't tend to give you any lasting effects um, other than you know, being careful for a few days and uh, gen gently getting back into training. Then you have your grade two injuries, which result in a, a, a partial tear of the actual fibers of that ligament. Um, so these result in a lot more pain and swelling around that area of injury. Um, and then you have your grade three injuries, which result in a complete tearing of the ligament. Okay? So these tend to result in a lot of instability in the ankle and can cause a lot of long-term problems um, if we don't get on top of them early. Okay, so here we have Olivia. Um, when we're looking at assessing ankle sprains, um, they're, they're quite classically um, identified by the history. So that history of the foot rolling in is, is a really good indicator that you know, that's what we're probably thinking of with these um, ankles. Um, so they classically present with swelling around, around this area of the ankle. So swelling, pain, um, the other things that we might see, particularly if it's been a little bit of time since they had the injury, is that they may exhibit a loss of range through their joint, um, joint stiffness, um, and even a loss of balance. Um, so they're all the, the common things that we see with, with these ankle sprains. Um, so looking into our assessment, what we're gonna be looking at is, obviously we do wanna see where the swelling is particularly, so whether it be low on the ankle here or higher up on the ankle can be suggestive of what ligaments might be involved. Then we're gonna look at doing some range of motion, so looking at how well they can move their foot down and moving their foot up towards them, okay? And then we wanna look at how their joint's been affected. So do they have any stiffness through their joint? Um, that can be you know, something that we need to be wary of, particularly if they have left it a little bit of time, maybe they, they didn't get onto their management early. Um, and the other thing that we look at is some special tests to see what the stability of the ligaments are. So that can give us a really good idea on the degree of injury. So whether it be you know, what we talked about before, whether it be a grade one, grade two, or grade three injury, we can get a really good feel for that. And that gives us a good idea on you know, the prognostics and potential timeframes to return to sport if we've got a good grasp on that early on. Okay, so looking into treatment, we start by managing the acute phase. So we all know about ice. So we want to certainly in the early stages be applying ice over the area of the injury. Um, so in the early stages, particularly 10 to 15 minutes every hour to two is going to be great for that to help to reduce some of the pain and swelling in that area. We also want to be elevating the foot above, particularly the knee. Um, we want to be applying compression to it. So either a be a compression bandage that you can wrap around or some tubi grip which applies some nice even pressure to the ankle and foot. Certainly you want to be covering the whole of the foot and ankle because um, some of the swelling will track down into the foot as well. So you want to be managing that swelling right through there. Um, and then we also want to be looking at maintaining some mobility through the joint. So as we said, there's a lot of swelling around the ankle. So we wanna be getting them into some early mobilization. So doing some simple exercises like just getting you to pull your foot up towards you and then pointing your foot down and then repeating that you know, for a good 30 seconds to a minute every hour just to keep 
the swelling pumping out of the area and to maintain some mobility around the ankle joint. Um, the other thing, early stages with ankles, is the question of whether we put people on crutches or not. Um, normally we try and avoid putting people on crutches because we do want to keep the foot and ankle moving. Um, where we would look at it is where there's still significant pain weight bearing through the joint um, and um, that, that's certainly what we would look at doing in that situation. Um, or if there's a lot of swelling that comes on because they're on their feet a lot. So crutches can be useful, but ideally we want to be avoiding them as much as possible in the early stages to maintain that early mobility. Um, so they're the main things that we look at. From a treatment perspective as physios, what we're going to be looking at doing is helping to facilitate removing that swelling. So lots of techniques like massage to try and remove swelling out of that area um, and mobilising the joint um, to remove any stiffness that might cause us some lingering discomfort after the ankle injury has healed is going to be really useful. Um, and obviously making sure that we're managing that at home as well by maintaining that range of motion with some exercises regularly at home. Okay, so that's our early stage. And then in the, the second stage of rehab, uh, we're looking at really functional rehab, looking at returning to sport. So. The goals in that phase are going to be more about getting strength, um, restoring balance around the ankle. So particularly if you've had a tear to that ligament, it actually loses some of the, the sensory input around your ankle to identify when your foot's rolling. Um, so we need to try and retrain this area to control that movement better. Um, so strengthening the muscles through the outside of the leg here, they're the muscles that basically help to inhibit us from rolling our ankle this way. Um, so we do that basically very simply using some TheraBand. So the TheraBand, if we get you just to bring both your feet down there, we can just put a loop of TheraBand around one of the feet, around the sort of ball of the foot area there, and then loop it around the other foot, just get you to hold on to that there. And then what we're looking at doing is getting Olivia to just basically lift your foot up and out. So try and keep this foot still and lifting up and out and then relaxing back into that starting position. So you can see when we do that, we're working these muscles through the outside of our ankle, trying to strengthen them up, okay? So those muscles are really important for us when we've had these types of injuries. Okay, so next up we're gonna go on to a um, common balance exercise that we use. So we'll get you standing up now, Olivia, and we can demonstrate how to uh, use the wobble board. So if we get you just standing on the wobble board, just with one foot on first, and then standing with the other foot as well. So the aim that we're gonna work on to start with is just to try and keep the wobble board off the ground on the edges. So trying to keep our balance in the center of the board, okay? Which quite often for people that have lost that sensation through their ankle from an ankle sprain, they do have a little bit of difficulty doing that to start with. Um, but as they practice, they get better and better at it quite quickly. Um, so some of the other things that we might look at with the board are just to get them used to sort of moving their feet forward and backwards. So getting you to just point the board down, touching the front of the board on the ground, and then touching the back of the board on the ground, and then coming back towards the front of the board again, pointing the front down, good. And then we might look at some side to side movement. So if we get you then to try and tip the board down to one side and then down to the other side. Okay, so this helps to get some of the small little muscles around the ankle working again, getting an idea of where our ankle sits in space. Um, so we could then progress that further by getting them to try and challenge by standing on one leg or throwing a ball at them to catch while they're doing the exercise. Um, so that'd be some good ways, particularly if they're going back into a sport where they're, they're using balls, um, you know, being able to focus on another task while their running and jumping and landing is going to be a really important thing to retrain. Um, so that's, that's our balance training um, done. Then we'd be looking at starting a graded program with them running. Um, so starting with essentially some straight line running drills and then building in some agility by doing some change of direction, um, zigzagging type drills. Um, and then we'd also look at particularly with people that are going back into a landing sport, doing some jumping and landing drills. So one of the really good little drills that we've got for 
retraining jumping and landing is um, the box drill. So we're going to show you that drill now. It's a very simple little drill. Um, we've got a few different levels that we can work through. So all we're going to do is draw out a little box, um, pretty well just big enough for you to stand in. And then what we're going to focus on is just jumping out of the box forwards, jumping back into the box, jumping back out of the box, jumping back into the box, and then we're going to jump out of the box sideways, back into the box, out of the box the other way, back into the box. Okay, so then we can continue to do that. It's actually not that easy to do, um, quite a physical thing that you can work on doing. Then you could progress it by changing to doing it on one leg. Um, so that, that would be the next step for us. Um, and then once you can do all that stuff, you're pretty well ready to get back into your sport and start training again. Um, so that would be the next thing that we'd be looking at doing is getting you safely returned back into training from there. Okay, so in closing, ankle injuries are one of the common things that we see in our clinic. Getting an early assessment and treatment from a physiotherapist is critical to getting you back into your sport early and avoiding the secondary complications that can occur. If you need more information, then you can head to our website and look under the commonly treated sports injuries section, or you can book an appointment to see one of our physios to get you back on track to getting you on the field. <laughs>